Hello and welcome back to Fab Rugby and it's a big welcome back to Futures as we start season two. Now in season one we met up with Ben Earl and George Burbank to learn a little bit more about them in a season where they were emerging talent. Now in that same season they went on to play for England and it was great to see their success from what we saw as a day to day and then see them on the international stage. So I thought we'd continue that in season two and this time we're up in Manchester to start season two off with Rafi Quirk, the sales shark scrum half who is lighting up the premiership with his pace and ability. Let's spend the day with Rafi, get to know him a little bit more and just find out what makes him tick. seen you in the gym doing a few bits and bobs but where did your story into rugby begin where did your journey begin um i was like five years old taken down to broughton park by my dad and he got involved, involved in the coaching side of things sort of coached me all the way through broughton park to the like senior colts and then i was playing playing here got picked up from by Lancashire from broughton park yep. and then um from lanks came sale and then sale 16s 18s and then luckily got a contract have you always played scrum half? Um, sort of have. I've played on the wing, fire half, bits and bobs, but mainly, mainly been a scrum half. Did you play any other sports when you were growing up? Yeah, growing up, um, a very sporty family. Parents both love the sport. Played cricket, tennis, a big one of mine was triathlon. Yeah. Um, did that since I was young, both my parents, very keen triathletes. So me and my older sister, my younger brother and sister actually did them as well. But um, I was, like Northwest champion, like under 12 or something like that. Amazing. But um, kept doing that, and then obviously with the rugby, started putting on a bit more size, and then couldn't really fit the triathlon mold anymore. It's too heavy to do. You still got the medals? Big long so. swims. Yeah, I still got the medals and the trophies. <laughs> so, but I think that actually has helped my rugby, because being that like the fitness you get from triathlon has always made me try and be the fittest on the pitch when I play rugby. At what point did it kind of start? Did you start thinking, okay, I've got to start taking rugby seriously, or did you? Yeah, what was the point? There must have been a point you suddenly thought. This is something I could take a bit further here. I suppose after the sale in the 16s, um, like Wellington tournament, I got picked for England in the 16s. I think that was probably the light bulb moment where I was like, right, this is actually my, like my career path this is what I want to do in the future. Fast forward a few years then from that, that stage, you then made your debut for sale and it was your boyhood club, wasn't it, sale? Yeah, so yeah. How was that making your debut? I think you shared a photo of you in the giant shirt. And yeah, stuff. So yeah. How, how was that? How were the emotions on that kind of day? Um, it was unbelievable really, like I wasn't really expecting to get as many minutes as I did and then managed to make a decent break and I mean, because I knew that Alex told me you're going to get an opportunity, you just got to take your opportunity, so I did everything I could to do that. So today we're going to like follow you around, get, kind of see what you get up to on a day and kind of yeah learn what Rafi Quirk does in a day as such. Um, you're also going to show us some skills a bit and then we'll have a catch up later and find out a bit more about kind of where you're at now and then we'll talk a bit about where you're going to be putting your head in the future. Sounds great. Brilliant. So you just done your training session, how was that? Good session, just uh, getting some clarity on some detail, yeah. some moves, heading into Bristol. Quite a physical session, is that kind of usual or is that...? Uh, sometimes Tuesdays can be a bit physical, Yeah. Um, obviously it depends on the opposition we're coming against. If we know if we know they're going to be physical out wide with the backs, the backs tend to do a bit more physicality, so, so a bit more contact today. With, with regards to a training week, like how much are you doing around your specific position, so being a scrum half, how much are you... I mean, doing? after sessions, try and get in my extras, my passing, a box kick, we always do our box kicking, all the nines, me, Cliffy, Faf and Gus. Obviously kicking's become a big part of the game, why is that? Because a lot of people might not realise what the kind of, why teams are, because they're just kicking the ball away as such, yeah. so what, what's, what's the main advantage would you say to I it? mean, we, we try not to kick the ball away too much, but well, tactical it's tactically to, 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 if we're going nowhere on the pitch and we're not going to be able to make any, line, any, any gain carrying, we might as well try and put a contestable kick up, win it back, maybe get 20, 30 metres and get further up the pitch. And then we can build momentum from those kicks. 
So first thing you do when you finish the game, what's your kind of like way to switch off? To switch off after a game, um, sometimes get a takeaway or what sometimes... What would be your takeaway choice? Probably a Chinese. I'm, I'm, too, I'm too tired after a game to try and cook anything nice, so or go back home, parents might cook something nice. Um, but sometimes cheeky takeaway doesn't go amiss. And food's a big thing for you, isn't it? Yeah, food, definitely. Food's very important to you. So, what, like, you I see you've got like an Instagram page where you do your yeah, like, pitch the plate. Is that kind of what you want to do moving forward? Like, we're talking a lot about nowadays with players how they're looking post career. Is that kind of are you already thinking that far ahead? I sort of am. I mean, at the minute, the pitch the plate, the Instagram is just sort of a. I can share the food I like to cook and um, show people my cooking skills and to try and just build a following so that makes the trans transition easier. After rugby, my goal is I'd love to own a restaurant, uh, write the menus, run run the show. Um, so it's sort of trying to showcase my skills now so it's easier, easier transition later on after rugby. The final question is the toughest one of the lot, is 10 years in the future, I want you to get your crystal ball out now. Yeah. What do you want to have achieved? What do you want to look back and go, Oh my, what a career I've had. What would be your dream to, to be in 10 years' time to sit back and go, wow? Um, my dream, to, to be fair, would be to have, to have won multiple premierships with Sale, um, to have won a World Cup with England, um, play for the British and Irish Lions. Obviously, these are all the highest aspirations I've got to, yeah, to play for the British and Irish Lions, win a Test Series. Um, I'd love to go and and play in a different country like uh, New Zealand, probably learn, develop my game from Super Rugby and that kind of stuff. I've always been a big fan of Super Rugby in New Zealand and Australia, so um, I'd love to be involved in some of that, maybe in some Sevens, um, some F Sevens accolades, because I love that as well. So, in 10 years time, probably, probably that, and hopefully have inspired quite a few people, young people from around Manchester, up north, to to maybe take the rugby route instead of the football route um, and to mix it up a little bit like that. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. It's been great to see what you do on a day and I wish you all the best for the future. And who knows, in 10 years' time, we could be sitting here and you could have won all these things, so who knows. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Thank, thank you very much. much. Right, cheers. cheers.